the problem if you saw it. Um, I thought I would just jump on here real quick and just, I guess, um, give you a little information on me. And I've talked about this before, but, um, a few years ago, I was diagnosed with what's called major depressive disorder. And it er major depressive disorder and or M D D and basically what it is according to this article um major depressive disorder is characterized by an overwhelming feeling of sadness, isolation, despair that lasts two or Two weeks or longer at a time, depression isn't just an occasional feeling of being sad or lonely. Like most people experience from time to time. Um, instead of a person, you know, just feeling down, just kind of, meh. Um, me personally, I just feel like I'm down a dark wall. I've I've never I'm never gonna come back out. Now also I've been dealing with depression for undiagnosed for years. And I'm not kidding. I can I was never a perfect child. I've always had problems. What kid hasn't? I've been bullied. I've been a bully. And to all that I have hurt, I apologize. I'm sorry. Yes, that was a long time ago, but um, still. And words can't help to heal, but, you know, I, I've, I've taken, I take full responsibility for every action I do. Have been. And one of my actions was to hurt people. Both maybe verbally, physically, 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 you know. And that's not right. And also, like they're saying, I have been bullied for I don't know how long. And it doesn't help. And on top of my major depressive disorder, I have anxiety slash panic attacks, which I've had for years, but I didn't know what they were. Not until a few years, some years ago, I started having attacks like my heart was about ready to beat on my chest, I'm sweating, I'm freaking out. I don't know what's going on. So I had to go to the ER and the doctor's like, yeah, you're having a panic attack. So, yeah. And of course on top of panic attack, oh, sorry, on top of panic attacks, anxiety, and depression, I have migraines. Then on top of the migraines, I had I suffered from depression. At the time, it was known. I was told I, I didn't have a concussion. Nope, nope. Sure, shit. I heard my French. Um, I want to say it was day after. Day I think it was day after. A couple days after. I can't remember. I had to go back to the walking park or ER and tell them what was going on. I'm like, this isn't a normal migraine. I. I can't stand it. And the doctor is like, yeah, you've had a concussion. I'm like, no kidding. My ex knew that. My mom knew that. My dad, who was, he's a, he was a paramedic at the time, and he's been through, obviously, um, medical training, and he knows, and he's seen a lot. So he's like, yeah, you have a, 
concussion. My ex said I can have a concussion. I remember coming home from the ER, <laughs> hobbling. Now I mean hobbling to get to that bathroom so I could get sick. And then I passed out. So, I like I passed out. I went to the couch and they said I was not accurate. My peoples were huge. Let's just put that way. Huge. And I didn't have a concussion. Nope. Oh, this is terrible. Um, so anyway. Healing that, I later found out, I also, that's the other, um, the other name for it was a traumatic brain injury. So, um, I have trouble, I've always had that memory, but just, this just makes it worse. And I get mad, and I cry, like, I was trying to do a, Arts and Crafts with my upstairs neighbor's little girl who I used to watch. And I adore her. And, um, I think it was either trying to make a heart or a Christmas tree. And I was just getting to mind because I, I couldn't remember. It was a simple thing that I could not remember to do. You know, I was. I'm gonna throw it out there. I was pissed. And then I was getting pissed and I was getting upset. Yeah, so, but, luckily, I seen the doctor, and I told them, told him, my, this was before I had my brain injury. Okay, sorry. Um, I told him what was going on, and he was like, okay, this is something we can do with. Um. Here's some medication to help you. And I've been on medication ever since. Paxil? Paxil? No. Just with B, I can't remember. I think it was Paxil. Um. Ooh, that was bad. On top of that, I had, because of that, I don't think it was Paxil though. Um, anyway, it started with the P, so forgive me. Um, it did not work for me. I, I, I had what's called serotonin syndrome. Rock on. And the doctor I was seeing at the time, nope, nope. Me and my ex were in there, he's like, uh, I call her. I call her and let her know what's going on. I call her office. Then I went in there, I'm like, look at my ex, guy. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Who basically knows me, knew me, you know, was like, <clears throat> I'm going to divorce her. She's out of her effing mind. You know, this is not right. This is not her. And I was like, okay, whatever. So we'll put you on this. And then, yeah. I think that was either before or after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was after. Um. So, from then on, I have been on a regiment of medications and with the regimen of medications I take it helps me kind of level out and somewhat control but yet I also see a therapist for talk therapy who also helps me and gives me the steps to deal with this stuff and just be like okay so that and another reason that's why I have he's on your ankle. And that's a lot of the reasons why I've always had dogs too, but I wanted a, a pet. Um so the place where I lived at the time only allowed pets if Oh, I was so sorry. Um if you had a you know recommendation from a doctor and uh, you know it had to be a certain reason and this and that so I went through my ther therapist and she gave me a note and she wrote a letter to my 
apartment managers and they had to go through the sets and I was approved and when I was looking for a dog I met well, uh, well after a while I met my current boyfriend and I got Max and after a while I got Buzzy and then after a while I got Elias and after a while I got Fuel and then now we have Sydney. So having said that the other I have so many issues. But then again, who doesn't? I am I'm not ashamed. I'm thirty five and I've tried to work my entire life. Well not my entire life, but um aside from the babysitting jobs, legally I think I started working from either in junior or senior year of high school up until uh, I was before I was before I moved back down here. Um, so yeah. And all the freakouts I would have were attacks, they were anxiety attacks, and I didn't know what they were. So I'm on social security disability. I'm not ashamed. This is just something to help me pay my bills, receive my medications. And yeah, I'm not lazy. Well, I am lazy, but it's not that if I don't have a chance to work, I won't. It's, I've tried to work. I, I've given good work. I've made mistakes. I, you know, I couldn't keep up. It was, you know, too much. And for someone without those type of problems, it wouldn't be so much of a problem but to me it was and why I'm saying this and why I'm telling you this is I have I live in an area and a few weeks or so ago there was this my hair goes up there with me there was this I can't remember how old he was this young man who was dating this like, this girl who was maybe a couple years old he was and she played joke a joke this was mm. um she's like oh, I'll no I'm summarizing so forgive me if you know that's the case you kind of know I'm going or trying to go so bear with me I apologize I mean no disrespect to families Basically, she's like, oh, I'm going to kill myself, or something to that, and, uh, excuse me, and I think he told her, she told him, he told her for himself, so, from that effect, again, I apologize to the families, I mean no harm, I mean no wrongful doing, um, and, She, this girl thought it was funny to do this. She thought it was a joke. No. 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 I think that day, or, I have to go back and look, but this, this boy, because of her, took his own life. And she thought it was a joke. No. No, no. So right now she's in. Well, I'm not. She's. Our family is heartbroken. Lost mother, father lost her son, brother, sister lost a brother. You know, grandparents lost grandkid, cousins lost her. Co you know what I mean? That's not right. I no. And then I was just watching something on Facebook, and this mother was telling the story of her two sons, and her oldest son was in sports. He's all you know, pretty much got on. Good, good kids, good kids. And her youngest was just as old, and she went on to say that. 
he was being picked on. Her youngest son was, you know, having all their soul for his age. And, you know, like other things that some kids didn't like. And, well, this poor kid would get bullied every day of his life. She said that it was so bad he was having trash thrown at him. He would be jumped behind walking to the bus and the kid that one of the kids that jumped him and beat him up texted him the night before or something said I'm gonna kick your kick your ass and this this young boy it's like why? I don't I know you don't like me. So I don't I don't um I avoid you I do nothing to you, then why do you want to bully me? Why do you hate me? You know, what have I done? And the kid, the other kid's bully said, Oh, you need, you're a. Uh, oh, I don't. I want to say the word. You're a pussy and you need your ass. And then he's like, Oh, why don't you go kill yourself? Get done and go shoot yourself. This poor kid. It's like, okay. I'll go, I'll get one of my guns and I'll go kill myself. And bully like, put up or shut up. So, Jose is basically telling people what he's gonna do. He's like, I'm gonna go home. You're not gonna see me anymore. I'm done. And I'm gonna kill myself. I'm like, yeah, right. And he was getting off the bus, and the bus driver's like, oh, I'll see you later, Daniel. And he's like, no, you won't. So he went home, called a hunting friend of his, and he was letting him know what was going on. And his, his, fr his hunting friend, was trying to, was on the phone and he's trying to get his sister's attention to like, hey, something's going on. Get dad, get dad, you know. So their dad, who was friends with this boy's dad, tried to call um the boy's parents and he was like, Hey, you know, and they missed her missed his call and unfortunately, you know, they were just coming out of a game that their other son was in and father looks on his phone, oh I missed a call from so and so so checked his voicemail and he's like, Oh this is the fraud you need to get home. So the mother called the called the neighbor and she's like, Can you go over? Can you watch him? Can you go see if something's going on? And the neighbor went to the house, hollered for the boy and unfortunately all she heard was, I love you. I'm sorry. And then, that was it. That mother, that family came home to a horrific sight. No parent. No one should see. The mother went on to say she was just begging the paramedics the at EMTs to find a pulse, keep, you know, unfortunately, you know. And the mother went on to say that they'll never, they'll never come back from this. And honestly, I can't say blame her. And yeah. So this is the, that's the reason I'm telling you that and there was <sighs> it took up. There's been people that I've been close to that have committed suicide. Before. I wish 
they were still here. You know, was I really, really close? No. But was I close? Not as close as I should have been. And unfortunately, two sides. <laughs> it's not complicated, but it is. And I'm sorry this is so long, but this is just something mental health wise that can affect anyone. Can affect anyone. So if you know. Okay. So if you know anyone that is. Would you stop? If you know anyone that's planning to hurt themselves, self, either through self harm or thinking of suicide or yourself, get help. Yes, it's scary. And some people think, no, I don't need help. Right now. Help is there. There are people that care about you. And it's not a cop out if you go for help. No, it's not. It's actually a brave step. Now, why I'm telling you this? Well, let's go back to a little ways too. There have been a few times where I've tried to commit suicide. Thank the gods that I wasn't. That I wasn't. That I didn't go through with it, or that I wasn't successful. And unfortunately, it did take me longer to get help, but I eventually got it. And I. Out through my crap that I'm going through, I'm just thankful that I'm still here. I'm thankful that my nieces, my nephews, my brothers, my brothers, my sisters, my mom, my dad, my boyfriend, my friends, my dogs, <laughs> all had me here. And I'm blessed. The bad. So. Like I said, I, I want to apologize if I was all over the place and this video is so long, but I wanted to kind of share what I thought and my story a little bit. And again, I'm not out to hurt anyone. I am not out to bully, obviously. I, I got the story about this young man wrong. I apologize, but my thoughts and prayers. But yes, I know I'm not religious, but you know, there's someone. There's different beings that I believe. Call me crazy. I don't care. But anyway, there's always someone. Your angels. I'm not going to get into that, but you're here for a reason. You're, again, if you're going through anything, even, you know, just the blues, pick up a phone. Call a friend. Call National Suicide Hotline. Talk to someone. Get help. You know, call a friend. Call a parent. Go to your sister. Go to someone you trust. Get help. Um. And yeah. <sighs> but anyway, thanks for hanging out with me in this incredibly long, long video. And that's also been all over the place, but, but anyway, I love you guys. Again, thanks for hanging out with me, Grub Pokemon, and okay.